What's going on? It's Jeremy Disciples Garage, and today I'm starting the Grand Prix project. I need to make money like yesterday. So just a quick little shot here before this phone dies. Um, I'm gonna remove the side skirts so I can get it all the rust underneath, and then I'll I'll get some I'll do some still shots and some videos of that too. I wish I was welding some metal rockers and stuff like that, but and then uh, front bumper and stuff is all busted up too on it. So this is a quick flip. I don't have like three, four days and sheet metal laying around and all this to, to, to go ahead and throw into this car only to get an extra couple hundred bucks out of it anyway. So and there's lots of rock chips and things like that. A lot of scrapes. I think two or three windows are off the track. Got a little rust back here. I'm probably just gonna DA it and spray it all out. So that's that. Check it out. As you can see, this is where the rocker leaves the car. And is now embedded inside this plastic side skirt. Which is what's holding, making it all poppy. This car is gonna look really sweet without these, huh? So I'm gonna try to cut this rust off, put a little inhibitor on it, and maybe come up here with the DA and just kind of smooth some of this chipping paint off, um, so I can feather that out a little bit. And I'll come up here and go pretty much all the way around the wheel well. Um, all the way up to here, probably tape this off and uh, clean this up up here and all that. So I'm going to get the rest of the side skirt off the front and then I'll show you what it looks like without it on there. Well that doesn't do anything. some stuff in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay guys, I found the design flaw. I've been finding the design flaws with stuff like on the Dodge Ram, if you look at the Dodge Ram videos and stuff. But uh, there's a gap stick my hand up here inside the rocker basically and I can stick my finger through if you can see my finger right there see it I could stick something else in there I guess but it's on the tip of the uh, right in there see I stick my whole screwdriver through there I don't know just a big gaping hole right here it's probably supposed to be like some kind of a seep hole or something but here I'll push a rock through it there you go <laughs> but I don't know, with this wheel turning this way and, and snow being snuck to, stuck to it, it just throws it right on that hole the whole time. I mean, most of it will go up in there, hopefully, but, you know, lots of it goes in there. And lots of snow builds up there, too. If you guys live up in the north, you know what I'm talking about. There's just these big gaping holes right there where all that blood and slush and shit can go right in the rockers and then sit there for about five years and cause chaos. All right, check this beast out. That rust just went beast mode on this car. That's crazy. I mean, that's a that's like a pile of rust there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it just goes on. Mmm. <laughs> Ready, sweet. Skirt. 
And that's the old rocker. Sweet. Okay, so I thought maybe I would be able to make this look sweet, but I don't think there's any making this look sweet. I mean, you can see how bad this car is. I mean, the best way to do this would obviously be to cut as much of this rust out as possible. And there's just too much. If I cut all the rust out of this thing, I think this car will cave in. And then once it's all treated, obviously you could come down here um, with some sheet metal at about one inch, three quarters of an inch or so. And uh, yeah, I was gonna say just lay some sheet metal around this thing, but this lip right here is pretty rusty too, underneath. So, I mean, you could keep it if you wanted to. And this repair would obviously only be like a six month to a year long repair if you're lucky. So <laughs> you could come up to this line here, but it'd be a lot easier just to go down to here and then just kind of fill this in when you're done this little hole right here so I'm saying cut the rust out all the way up to there and stuff and then cut all the rust across this line but come out with about a one inch sheet metal about one inch wide right here and just lay it flat right there and weld it right down in that crease and then obviously it bend back under there but it's this front layer that's crappy and if you get this off I mean there's a couple clean spots where if you get all this rust off of here and you get this layer that was coming in here, this layer right here, you can see the two layers. You get this outside layer off and there's good metal underneath there on the layer coming from underneath the car. So I would clean all of this rust off, hit it with the DA hard, bust it all off, and then cut whatever rust, off. just cut all the rust off. So if you came down off the top here, you know, off of this flat part with one inch, three quarter, whatever, you could curve it around just have it curve around down about five inches all the way down to here and then make another one inch lip going up and weld it across the back or something like that or make the make the bin going down and just press it right here and spot weld it or something I don't know it'd be pretty crappy either way either way this would be a crappy repair unless you really wanted to put some money into it but yeah you can find something to weld to under there and, and put rockers on it but my approach for this flip is to just get rid of this car and try to make a quick 1500, 1200 right around there. Is yeah, so to just put these back on here like this. Get those back on there like that. Bolt them down from the top right here through the existing metal that I was just saying we should weld to. And just kind of, I don't know, whatever. Clean this kind of shit up and just leave it. That's it. It's going to show from underneath. You're going to see all the rest from underneath. But once it's back on, it'll look 10 times better and for the cost and the time that it would take to put into this to get it looking nice it's still got 230,000 miles on it it's a 2,000 Grand Prix so it's not worth it I could get a maximum if this thing had no rust and was beautiful with the mileage that it has and everything working inside and running like a top I could probably get like two grand 20 maybe you know maybe 2200 bucks I don't know somewhere around in there that's immaculate condition, perfect paint job though. And the condition it's in right now with all this rust and stuff, these side skirts, if I left it, I just wanted to sell it right now, I'd probably get like, I could sell it fast for 500 bucks, but I'd probably get, I'd probably wait a little bit and try to get about 900 bucks for it. Um, and I mean, just because, I mean, look at all the crap that you see on Craigslist for a thousand dollars. There's so much junk on there. It's crazy, like way worse looking cars than this. So 900 bucks would sell it, it would sell for 900. But um, the heat works, the AC works, it runs like a top, it's good to go, you know. Um, just got all this rust. So I'm thinking I clean up these side skirts a little bit, do a little bit of work, get the windows working and stuff good and stuff like that. And it's a $1,200 car all day long. So that's my outtake anyway. What do you guys think? Just going to go ahead and tape this plastic bumper off right here so I don't hit it with the uh, DA. And then uh, go ahead and hit this. Uh, got DA on the, or <laughs> got 80 on the DA. Ready to rock. Turn that up a little bit.
so you can kind of see where the bare metal will start showing up and then you can see I don't know if you can see that it's kind of glary and then you can see the darkness so you should be able to see a paint layer a primer layer and on this one that's bare down the bare metal right away so um, once you can start seeing that you can you're, you know you're pretty close you're close enough for 80 grit anyway and then you can switch to 120 so you just get everything to where it feels pretty close with this 80 grit she is all feathered out nice and smooth got a little couple little pits right there actually but I'm uh, I'm not doing a good job on this car I'm just getting ready to go so Normally I would just leave that and paint right over it. I don't even care. I'm just trying to make this look a little nicer, but I'm actually going to throw some spot putty in there just to smooth it out make it look good. And I could come out into the door a little bit and paint there too, but it's going to open up another can of worms and I don't know that it would look better anyway with trying to blend, you know, a single stage paint, you know, out of a rattle can into clear coat. So I don't even think I'm going to mess with doing that. So I got a little patch here. Freaking really? Look at that. Like 10 years of dead and dead roads right there. Jeez, all the bumps. Pretty ugly. Gosh, it looks like this was a second. Jeez. Yeah, she's been sitting for a little while and got surface rust all over the motors now. So, we're going to go ahead and turn them. Hack and pack style. up for a little bit. We'll have some nice clean rotors. Okay. I don't know if you can make it out or not, but that's the sun going down. Going, going, gone. And this is my mess. Boy, that looks bad from here. <laughs> yep. So see what I get done um, I got these all feathered out wiped them down really good and got some etch primer on there I did the back bumper um, it was real faded patch just across the whole back I don't know if you guys seen that or not beforehand I don't think I got very good uh, beforehand pictures so you can kind of see what I'm talking about that paint peeling look kind of like that Put the water inside the lenses I was thinking about drilling some holes in those things, letting them air out. <laughs> I got this side all done and then uh, etch primer. <sighs> some rust holes. Pretty sweet. <laughs> got a little, little bit on both the front fenders right there. And then the whole front of the hood was really chipped up, so I hit that the same way I did everything else, you know. 80 grit on the DA until it was all halfway smooth 
then I 180'd it up to there about. So I'm hoping I can kind of blend that in. I don't know how this is gonna go. I've never attempted blending single stage rattle can paint into base coat clear coat. So we'll see how that goes. Got my rotors turned. So it kind of dees. Uh, hit all the stuff up underneath there with the flat black. That really, that's one of those, I don't know if I got that from somebody, I, I know I picked that up off another channel, but everybody does it. Anybody that flips cars knows that little secret. Hitting the flat black up underneath there really just cleans it up, makes it look decent. So yeah, um, I gotta have this done like tomorrow and listed by tomorrow. That's kind of the plan. Um, yeah. All right, guys, just doing some. Um, got the Grand Prix pulled in here. Got the kid mowing the grass. Uh, I got the Grand Prix pulled halfway in the car here. Or got the Grand Prix pulled halfway in the garage here. And uh, just gonna see if I can't can't uh, wet sand some of this retarded stuff out. So uh, I'm going to hit this with some uh, cool 1500 stuff I got uh, on the stickets. So you guys ever want to try that? They're pretty sweet. Keep it wet. Keep it rolling. And you practice, you'll get to where you can just use that all the time. A lot faster than doing it by hand. I like it anyway. And it hasn't screwed me up so far. So get some nice glare off my sweet spectacles. <laughs> best to do a section at a time not just go all over the place but you kind of lose concentrate, concentration when you're trying to film something so I was gonna do this whole thing and that'll make it a lot easier to buff out <clears throat> well, this is about half of what came out of the rockers, including the rockers. That's another good load. But anyways, gotta get one last shot here before I sell it. Didn't go quite as planned, but of course I locked it. It's a woman owned. <laughs> God dang it. Fix this, clean this window up a little bit too, so. Sonia chicks are here to check out the car.